I'll now hand over to the Western Cape government, uh, our colleague, um, Mr. Salim. Uh, I don't know if we are, we are ready. So, Mr. Salim, can you hear us? I can hear you, thank you. Hey, uh, well, welcome uh, to our session, and uh, please uh, take us through uh, the industrial symbiosis. We know that you are running a program there, which is uh, aligned, and we always collaborate as colleagues. So having said that, you have your 15 minutes before we go to the panel discussion, and then we wrap up the session. Thank you, Salim, over to you. Thank you, Mr. Program Director, and thank you for the opportunity to present. I'm not sure if someone from that side will be moving the slides because I see it's presented on my screen. So if that could be done, that would be great. Thanks. So that's just the sort of content. So I'm the Director of Waste Management at Western Cape Government, Department of Environmental Affairs and Development Planning. And um, I'll be giving this sort of from a perspective of, of government in terms of how IS plays an important role and also how it impacts on the waste situation in the Western Cape and maybe also South Africa more broadly. Next slide, please. So that's ideally what we're looking at. This is the sort of world that we uh, would want and uh, want to see, but unfortunately that's not quite what we at, but we have to strive towards it and maybe IS could get us there. Next slide, please. So I'm just going to give a quick, you can move on to the next one as well, just a quick report of the uh, 2020 State of Waste Report for the Western Cape, um, if you could just move on. So there we have it, there's been a 11.8% population increase in the province. Um, a lot of it has also been migration into three particular important areas within the Western Cape. Amount of waste that was disposed was over 2 million tons of it uh, from about 3 million tons of waste that's been generated. And uh, although there's efficient collection systems in there and a better than average for South Africa diversion rate of 23%, there's still a lot that can be done in terms of ensuring that uh, we do better in the waste field. Next slide, please. In South Africa, and you will notice that here I'm referring to 2017 Ooh. figures. This is just the latest sort of figures that we've got for, for the country as such. So in essence, there's at least 17.4 billion rand of resources that could be utilized that's actually just going to waste at the moment. And you can see the total amount was estimated to be about 107.6 million tons of waste that gets landfilled. And we've seen uh, in previous uh, presentations what could potentially be done with it. We've seen uh, school bags uh, created out of it. And who knows what more could have been done with what we're throwing away. Next slide, please. So yeah, everything tends to go to landfill. And landfill takes up approximately 90% of the waste streams in this country. But landfills itself are problematic and that we've, we've seen that hey, we're not just running out of landfill airspace, but there's also issues about overfilling of landfills, creating these sort of steep slopes that you, that you see there and there's potential of landfill slippage that could happen. Always plenty of fires happening at landfills and um, I don't think there's a day that goes by that you don't have to encounter landfill fires taking place. Obviously, these have got uh, other sort of environmental impacts as well. And then, of course, leachate. Um, this is a facility where, where leachate are just simply oozing out of the front gates of, of, of the facility. I mean, this is just not how landfill should be operated. So landfill itself is not the ideal and the sort of uh, panacea that we're looking for. Next slide, please. Just in the Western Cape, um, this is the situation that we face with in terms of landfills. Um, there's absolutely no more landfill airspace. Um, all the red places that you see, that means that there's actually less than five years of landfill airspace available. So we should be looking beyond landfilling and um, obviously lost opportunities that come in there as well. Next slide, please. If we continue with a sort of rate at which we're going at the moment, um, in, in terms of consumption and, and um, what we are just sort of using and throwing away, um, it's quite clear that at the point where we're at now, and this was actually at 2010 already, we have already consumed 1.5 times the Earth's capacity to support us. And if we continue on this trend, by 2050, we're going to need three planet Earths to be able to support us. Now, this is not possible. There's only one planet Earth. 
So we have to bring this figure down to our one planet Earth, and that's the green line that you see there. And in order to do that, this is really where a just change of mindset need to come in. Uh, this change of mindset obviously includes the whole circular economy concept, and embedded within circular economy is industrial symbiosis. Next slide, please. So you can just click again. So in essence, the circular economy in summation is just a model that decouples economic growth, because we're not saying do not stop any sort of econ economic growth that's happening. We need that to, to, to foster the well-being of the country, but it needs to be independent of the resource constraints that's there. So initially it was thought that we've got an overabundant supply of uh, resources, and also we've got an overabundant supply of places where we can dump the waste. Now, on both ends, the, the first end and the end end, we simply don't have enough resources, and that is why we need to make sure that we decouple that from our economic growth and become less reliant on virgin materials. Next slide, please. So we've got a design for a circular economy, essentially A, to look at these sort of facets that's there, and I think uh, previous speakers has alluded to it as well. A, we've got to make sure that we regenerate as much of the natural systems as possible, that we design out waste in terms of what is manufactured, how it's produced, so that it doesn't necessarily end up being a waste product. And then whatever is there, and I know that um, Sandile had also mentioned this, we must try and keep things for as long in the loop as possible. And these are the sort of three main components as advocated by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation in terms of ensuring we've got that circular economy going. Next slide, please. So, this is really what's known as your butterfly diagram, typical of, of circular economy principles. On the left, you have the what's known as the organic cycle, and on the right, you've got the technical cycle. So on the organic cycle, it's really to try and see, and, and you become more efficient if your loops are as small as possible as indicated on that slide. In other words, you want to try and keep the circles as small as possible, and then you become more efficient. So on the left, we're looking at, you know, what can be done with all the sort of organic waste streams that's there, a lot of it, and I think in my slide on the um, state of waste report, there's, a, there's more than 68% of it still going to landfill, which is which is crazy because this creates uh, greenhouse gases, um, methane, we talked about landfill fires, um, anything that is bad, and, and it's actually a wasted opportunity and a wasted resource if not captured properly. So areas like composting, areas like... Um, anaerobic digestion, et cetera. These are all components of industrial symbiosis that could be explored in order to get a better output of, of organics. And then if you look on the right-hand side, that's your technical cycle, and this is really where we're looking at other opportunities that could come from more the mechanical type uh, products, your non-organic uh, operations, and try and reuse as much of it as possible. If things do break, it must be easy to repair. Uh, components need to be standardized so that we can actually get a lot more of the of the equipment going. I mean, if you look at cell phones today, less than two years or on two years, just as your warranty expires, you've got to get rid of it because it, it stops working. And, and this is really inefficient. We need to start keeping things for much longer in the loop as possible. Next slide, please. So these are really the benefits of a circular economy for businesses, and this is really to get better profit opportunities. Um, this sort of mass production uh, capacity that we've been looking at has just been, um, hey, it may have worked in the 1950s, but uh, in today's day and age, there's just no place for it. Um, we've got to make sure that we've got a reduced um, volatility and, and greater supply security. Now, that hasn't become more prominent like the situation right now. And I know that the um, Sumai from ESCOM had indicated that you know the whole area around electronic goods is so important. And just this uh, conflict in the Ukraine between Russia, uh, well, between Russia and the U Ukraine at the moment has actually created a big scarcity of computer component parts, particularly the sort of uh, rare metals that, we, that we're looking for. And this has really impacted on, you know, just our connectivity and just ensuring that, you know, uh, computers can actually be manufactured. So 
little conflicts all over creates a big uh, issue and we need to ensure that we're ready for that sort of thing as well. Obviously, other areas of, of concern is the there's, there's obviously new demand for business services. And in the next slide, I'll show you about organics that, that's there. And of course, with the circular economy, you can actually maintain and build better customer relations. Instead of just throwing out mass products, you actually maintain your sort of customer loop that's there as well. Next slide, please. Um, I think we can pass this because I'm sure that by now everybody understands what industrial symbiosis is, so maybe just move on to the next slide. So in the Western Cape, yeah, we've got the Western Cape Industrial Symbiosis Program currently running, and that is uh, coordinated by, by Green Cape on behalf, currently on behalf of the city of Cape Town, who's the funder towards it. And in this time period, it has facilitated over 220 synergies. Um, and I'm talking about the time span. It started off in about 2013 uh, to date, and that's the sort of period that we are, are really looking at. So in that time, more than 130,000 tons of waste has been diverted from landfill. Um, in terms of greenhouse uh, gas emissions, we've had approximately 310,000 of that saved in the process. And just to bring that maybe to electrical usage, that could power up close on to 40,000 households in South Africa. So that's the potential. And then in terms of savings, that's over 147 million rand generated in financial benefits as, as such. And in terms of jobs, that's 392 economic-wide jobs that's been created in the process. So clearly, instead of just throwing things away, these are the sort of potential that's, that's really there by building in industrial symbiosis as such. Next slide, please. So these are just some of the sort of examples where um, industrial symbiosis could come in. And uh, there's obviously been circularity in the plastic crate industry. Uh, a lot of this um, has come through where crates used to be dumped. Uh, but instead of just dumping and filling up our landfills, um, there's been a reuse, a re sort of um, working of the material and at least 35 tons of HDP plastics from landfill was diverted in the process. And in terms of revenue saving, it, it is actually built up uh, to 350,000 rand in revenue in the process as well. And then, of course, there's also sort of nice um, sort of feel-good stories that also come from it. Um, so WISP had worked with the KB project, um, the ATSI and the Korea guy, who all worked together to try and actually get the get the process done. And this is really old fabrics, old materials that, that was be, that one was able to regenerate. They created these sort of toys from it. Um, one of the missing links was how do we get it from point A to point B? And that's when the courier guy actually stepped in. And in the process, um, one was able to actually divert 0.18 tons of waste. It may not sound like a lot because we're talking about sock fabric, etc. These are quite light, but I think in terms of impact, it was actually quite good. And about 10,800 rand has been saved in the process as well. Next slide, please. So it's quite important that one grows a sort of market um, for recycled and secondary materials. And this is really what is most important. And, and, and you can only do this by facilitating networks and partnerships um, between the generators, waste holders, and, and the treaters. Um, I know that one of the sort of platforms that's being used is the sort of um, uh, program called Synergy, where waste wants and waste haves are actually uh, sort of connected to see how these things could actually be best done. But best way of getting through it is actually through physical sort of engagement to ensure that um, one actually gets to know your, your customer needs, what your supplier uh, has got in terms of what needs to be diverted, and then to create these sort of partnerships as such, most important in, in getting the success that's required. Next slide, please. And these are just uh, five sort of, um, these are five circular economy sort of uh, case studies or, or, or best known sort of cases that's come through in terms of circular economy. Not all of them are industrial symbiosis, but there's also a space for industrial symbiosis that could come into it as well. So in terms of circular supplies, that is really where these sort of um, areas such as industrial symbiosis fits in quite nicely. And in all provinces, you've got an industrial symbiosis program, be it WISP, be it JISP, KISP, etc., depending on which um, province we are in. And that's really to try and utilize as much of the material that, that is there and keep it in circulation by connecting one 
company's waste stream to another's as input. Then there's also resource recovery, and um, I know Sandilia just mentioned the Black Soldier Fly. That is perfectly where that would fit in, where you're actually taking waste as a resource and converting that where it could be beneficiated for other uses as well. And then, of course, we've had product life extension, which is also another uh, key sort of component uh, where the clothing bank has really stepped in. Uh, clothing bank has really taken in all these sort of clothes from the top uh, sort of uh, companies, Woolworths um, and, and, and other sort of uh, clothing brands. It's there taking their sort of clothes that's sort of out of market, out of season, et cetera, and actually creating a secondary sort of um, and making it more affordable to parties out there that could use it. And this has created actually uh, further entrepreneurship, particularly amongst the SMMEs that could step into it. Uh, sharing platforms is another one. Um, this is ideal uh, for a company like Uber. Instead of uh, everyone buying a car, you don't really want the car to go from point A to point B. It's just that you need that transport. So instead of um, purchasing a product that you still need to maintain, service, and with fuel rates today, uh, we don't even want to go there. Um, all you are paying for is actually just your mobility to get from point A to point B without having to own and look after a, a an infrastructure as such. And then, of course, the last one is product as a service. Um, really, when you are uh, producing goods and services, there's a lot of packaging that goes with it as well. ACA Threads is a company that a lot of these sort of plastic spools that had their thread on. The companies don't want the spools, they want the thread. So ACA Threads actually engage with these companies to try and get back the, the, the threads creating a cost savings to them, and in that, in, in that sort of also maintaining the sort of customer relations that's, that's quite important to, to hold on to. Next slide, please. So here we've got organic waste, which is really what is entering our landfills at, at an alarming rate. Um, yet there's actually many opportunities where this could be beneficiated. And in the Western Cape, we've got a total ban on, of organics by 2027 to landfill. Um, and that in itself means that municipalities, private sectors, everybody has got to find a way of actually beneficiating that product. And I think this in itself, by bringing in these sort of law reforms, this is really what's needed to be able to start pushing and ensuring that industrial symbiosis and opportunities for, for the different sort of sectors is there to actually start beneficiating the waste streams that's there. So it's no longer waste, it's now a resource that's, that's there. Um, and this is really quite important in terms of ensuring that, you know, one creates a sort of platform and the ability of, of companies to start liaising. And, that, and, and we've already seen quite a lot of this happening where we've got organics probably diverted at about 32% now, and we're still aiming to try and get it to 50% by the end of um, this year. Next slide, please. So other sort of uh, circular concerns um, are textiles. I think there's quite a lot of textile opportunities that's out there. We saw a few of it earlier on with the socks, but there's a lot more that could be done. And I think um, that also fits into the biological and technical cycle. And of course, the organic waste I've just spoken about, there's, there's great opportunities that, that needs to come from that. And then e-waste, because of the sort of issues that, that e-waste poses, these are the sort of uh, key three areas that we need to start looking at in terms of just ensuring we can get the circular economy going and also uh, in addition to the industrial symbiosis because the opportunities are there. Next slide, please. Yeah, okay, that's that's about it from, from my side. Uh, thank you very much. If there's any further questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Just to let you know that um, it was mentioned uh, in the speaker before, Babasani, that uh, Industrial symbiosis also features on the working groups, uh, working group eight in particular, and it, uh, there are quarterly sort of feedback and reports, and it's closely monitored by um, the Department of uh, Forest Efficiency and Environment, and it is quite important that, you know, we get that momentum going as well. Thank you very much.